everyone. Thanks for having me. Like Alicia said, I went to De Anza. Uh, and when I went to De Anza, I was coming from Cupertino High School, so I grew up in the area, but I had no idea what I wanted to do as a career. Um, so taking classes here at the Kerr Center, it made me realize that environmental studies was an actual career that you could go into, and there, there was a lot of good options. Um, but I didn't know that I wanted to go into the field of integrated waste management and deal with waste. Um, I had no idea until I got to San Jose State and did it as a major. Um, and learn more about the different fields within environmental studies. It's just such a big umbrella of different things you can do. Um, so I got involved in waste, and that's what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today. Uh, SB 1383 is a state law, and it's a heavy lift for a lot of cities and counties in California. So Cupertino decided to hire a person dedicated specifically to uh, addressing the new law, SB 1383. So I work with businesses and residents, and we'll get into all the details of that. So as I was saying, it's the most significant waste reduction mandate to be adopted in California in the last 30 years, and it requires the state to reduce the organic waste, which, which is food waste, green waste, paper products, and everything like that, um, reduce the disposal by 75% by 2025. So it, it's a big lift. Uh, in other words, the state must reduce their organic waste disposal by more than 20 million tons by 2025. So it's a lot. Um, so when we're talking about organic waste for the purposes of SB 1383, uh, like I mentioned, it's, it's tree waste and wood and food waste and also fibers, um, anything like paper, cardboard, anything like that. Uh, it comprises over half of our waste stream, and uh, SB 1383, um, it requires California to recover 20% of the currently disposed edible food for human consumption. So we're asking all the restaurants and everything like that to not throw away the food, um, to actually get it to people who need it. So the regulations went into effect in 2022. Uh, and landfilling organic waste, it leads to the anaerobic breakdown of the material, which creates methane. And that's part of the problem we're seeing with climate change. Uh, so the state says that landfills are responsible for 21% of the state's methane emissions, and is the third largest producer of methane in the state. So putting the food in the garbage, it just gets buried in the landfill, and that creates methane. And that's part of the problem we're seeing in California. So there's better uses by uh, putting in an anaerobic digester, breaking it down, turning it into compost, and giving it back to farmers in California that plant it to grow our crops. So there's much better uses than putting in the garbage and landfilling it. Possibly contributing to climate change. So the regulations. So the regulations went into effect in 2022, as I mentioned. So that's when we started doing outreach and education as our, as a city. And it wasn't until the beginning of this year where the state is requiring us to take enforcement now. So if somebody isn't sorting properly or they don't have organic service, then they want the cities to find them and uh, give an administrative citation. So we're not going to just see something wrong and cite right away. Um, we have a process, and they don't tell you what the process is. You kind of have to create one. So I just got finished creating a solid waste ERP. So it's our enforcement re response plan for Cupertino. And what happens is there's four instances that we reach out to them before we find them. So there's two instances of outreach and education. So we'll put a news tag on their container to let them know, hey, this is the problem. Give them 30 days before they we come back and see if they are still uh, contaminating the waste stream or what have it. And after that, they get a second instance of outreach and education. And then it turns into a notice of violation, and then a second notice of violation, and then it goes to the administrative citation. So it's a long process before we actually cite somebody. We really just want to educate and do a lot of outreach before Finding, that's not really what we're going after. Um, the fines are like $50 for the first time, $100 for the second time, and $500 for the third and each subsequent time after that. So it does add up if you don't sort properly, but um, we're definitely not up there to find people, that's for sure. So this slide kind of outlines the major programmatic activities for jurisdictions, and um, CounterCycle has some funding through competitive grant programs, as well as loan programs for establishing infrastructure uh, for recycling. So I apply for grants, and the grant funding from Tower Cycle really helps us um, implement some of these programs that, that we're doing. So without the grants, I think it would be 
be difficult, but that helps out a lot. So this side just shows that it takes a huge team to tackle this. It's not just one person that's doing it. Um, yeah, so there's, there's a lot of groups that are involved. This is the program that we have in Cupertino. It's a three container source separated collection service. So it's pretty common, it's something that you would see at your house, is the trash, recycling, and compost. So it's not really a, a new um, idea, but sometimes it, it oh, sorry, there we go. Um, but yeah, the most basic element of the regulation is that jurisdictions are required to provide mandatory organic service. So they need to have that green part. So we're checking for that. The slides aren't matching up. It's okay. It work. Okay. So this slide is just talking about the procurement requirements. So the state's requiring us to purchase paper products that meet the requirements now. So they have to be 30% recycled content or more, and they have to be recyclable in California. Um, so this means any kind of paper, so copy, paper, post-it notes, calendars, anything like that we, that we purchase as a city must have meet these requirements. And there's other procurement requirements that we must um, procure a certain amount of tons of organic uh, material each year. And part of the way that we do that is by giving away free compost for the residents. So some of that compost that's being made with the food scraps, we have our hauler recology in Cupertino. Um, deliver it to a site such as the Cupertino Canyon at the reservoir over here, so people can pick that up for free and use it in their garden. And then we're also partnering with the smart station in Senegal now, so Cupertino residents can pick up compost there. But that's not enough. We can't meet the procurement require, requirement by giving out free compost. So we have to find other ways to meet those requirements. So we're partnering with this company right now that procures compost on behalf of Cupertino and subsidizes it for farmers in California. So they're buying compost, giving it to farmers who need it in California for a cheaper rate, and we're paying for that in Cupertino. So it's kind of like a win-win for everybody. They're using uh, SB 1383 compliant compost, so it meets all the requirements, it's organic, it's, it's good for the crops, and it's coming from the food waste that we're putting in the organic bin and the yard journals. So it's kind of like going full circle. So it's a pretty cool process to see. So there's construction and landscaping requirements in SB 1383, um, but we won't get into that too much today. Um, just know that there's requirements for, for when you break down buildings and stuff like that as well. So this is kind of like the timeline we had to go through as a city. Uh, first, in 2022, we had to adopt an ordinance. It's basically an enforceable mechanism so that we can um, enforce the law in Cupertino that uh, counter cycles set forth. And after that, it went to annual compliance reviews, route reviews, and inspections. So there was no enforcement. It was just doing the checks and doing that outreach and education and letting people know, hey, this is a thing. Um, be, be aware. Um, it's good for the earth. It's now a state law. So kind of giving that feel to, to businesses and everything like that. And then now that we're in 2024, um, compliance, monitoring, and enforcement. So it just really adds that enforcement side into things. This slide talks about some of the similar things that I was just mentioning. We have annual compliance reviews. So we have to audit generators that produce more than two cubic yards of waste per week. Uh, but that's, those are just people that are subject to desk audit. Desk audits, we have to actually look through everybody's trash. So here's uh, the enforcement response plan that I was telling you about. Here's the flow chart that I was mentioning earlier, where an issue is observed by the solid waste hauler, which is Recology in Cupertino, or Cupertino staff, or the public. So anybody can see a violation, say, 
Like any member of the public can look in a trash can and say, hey, there's organic waste in the trash, and that's not okay, that's breaking a state law. So they can let the hauler know, which is recalled to you, or they can let city staff know, or they can reach out to the state power cycle and the power cycle let us know. But in any rate, the issue is observed, and then it goes to education and outreach, which is the boost tag that I was telling you about, uh, just letting you know, hey, there's an issue, and then 30 business days, another instance of outreach and education, and then 30 business days, and then a notice of violation, which is just a little bit more formal. Um, and then if they fix it, compliance is achieved, or further action is required, but if not, then they get a second notice of violation, and then it goes to the administrative citations that I was talking about. So this is for residents and businesses. It could be somebody at their home that's not sorting properly. So um, in the contamination monitoring route reviews, Recology or the solid waste hauler in any city will be going around and checking people's garbage cans at random the day it goes out. So, most likely it won't be your house, but it could be. Here's some of the record keeping requirements. Power cycle with the state law, they want to know every little detail of everything that we do, so we have to record everything. Um, I use a program called Recyclist that's really helpful. Um, it's a company that created a tool just for us to track SB 1383 stuff. So what we're tracking is organic collection services, um, the hauler program, contain, contamination minimization, the waivers. So people that don't produce too much organic waste, I'm issuing waivers to. So if it's like a dental office or like a, a Taekwondo place or places that don't produce too much food waste, uh, I give them like what's called a de minimis waiver. So they don't have to have an organics cart. So we say it's for everybody, uh, but there are exceptions to that rule. So here's just a kind of like a breakdown of the three streams that I was talking about. Um, the compost bin in Cupertino, we place all food um, that's left on your tray, separated from plastic uh, or non-paper wrapping in the compost bin. So any paper products, like food soil paper or anything like that. We have a new law in Cupertino, um, the single-use plastics ordinance, where we prohibit any restaurant from using single-use plastics, um, even if it's um, compostable, because we've learned that compostable plastic doesn't actually break down in the compost stream, because here in this area, they go through a 90-day compost period, and based on the ASTM standards, that it, it, it goes through a 180 day cycle, so they're really just not breaking down. So we switched to a fiber based solution, so fiber based bowls, uh, bamboo, straws, and forks, and stuff like that. When it, uh, we found that it's better, so we're pushing that for businesses to use, um, and that can include the organics. Um, so, no plastic straws, plastic wrap, utensils that, that aren't fiber based, no metal, no styrofoam. And then, recycle, everyone knows that. Plastic, aluminum, glass, tin, paper. And landfill, pretty much everything else. So that's SB 1383. Happy to answer any questions you guys have if you want to email me after. I just think it, it gives a great opportunity for you guys to get involved, even if it's not within Cupertino. Every city in California has to um, follow SB 1383, and we're all kind of scrambling to figure out how we're going to follow all these rules and laws because it's, it's, it's a lot. So it's a, it's a huge lift for all the jurisdictions. Um, so every city in California is trying to figure out what they're doing and how they're going to keep everyone in compliance with this. So I hope it motivates you to get involved um, with any kind of local organization or local government. It's a good deal. It's pretty rewarding. So I'm having a lot of fun with it. Thank you.